Um, okay, so before I begin, I just want to echo the sentiments of everybody who stood up here before me and just thank you all so much for being here. It's really good to be able to share something that me and Ruby have been working on for so long with so many people who seem really interested. So thank you so much for, for taking your time out of your afternoon to come and be here. Um, so just a bit about me before we begin to introduce myself. I'm a recent graduate from Edinburgh where I studied a Master's um, of Research in History and my dissertation was titled Satan's Invisible World Discovered, the Defence of the Supernatural in 17th Century Scotland. So it ties in quite well with my work at Wikipedia, which I was quite lucky about. Um, I'm assistant Wikimedian in residence here at the university, which just means that I help you in facilitate discussions between students and Wikipedia and um, engagement in sort of uh, learning and open learning. I've helped Ruby in this role work on the map of Scottish witchcraft, the new map of memorials that Ruby will tell us about later, and of course the curious walking um, Edinburgh talk, which we are here to talk about today. So Curious Edinburgh is an app and website created by the University of Edinburgh, and it's previously covered topics such as the history of medicine, the Scottish Enlightenment, and um, examples like the Uncover Ed Tour. It's got an aim of being factual and historically accurate, which I think is fantastic. And it's not a resource that I knew about before I came into the role, but I would have loved to have known about it when I was a student here. Like being able to get on your phone and walk around the city and learn more about it is such a great thing and for free as well. So make sure you do make use of it. But our specific tour, we wanted to focus in on the history of witchcraft in Edinburgh. So we want to take you through the history of the witch hunts. There's 18 stops overall, starting at Edinburgh Castle, working the way down the Royal Mile. And then we've got some other sites dispersed around the city, such as the Galilee execution site in Leith. Um, it's based upon information in or bouncing off from the survey of Scottish witchcraft. Uh, and we really took this and wanted to um, shape it uh, akin to the survey, like much of the things we do as well. So here are a list of our 18 final stops we came up with. So we work our way from Edinburgh Castle um, down, we deviate slightly to go to the Cowgate and Greyfriars Kirkyard, come back onto the Royal Mile, work our way down to Holyrood Palace, um, and we have two uh, separate stops at the end, the Potter Report and the Galilee Execution Site. There are so many sites in Edinburgh we wanted to include, but it had to make sense to walk it. So that's why we've sort of followed the spine of the Royal Mile down. And the extra um, two stops at the end are there as like an option for anybody who really wants to go somewhere else and um, have a look. So here are some of the uh, names of people we have included in the tour. So we wanted to focus on a range of different um, accused witches and their prosecutors to get a rounded view of the witch trials in Scotland and in Edinburgh more specifically. So some of you might recognise a few names up there like Agnes Sampson or John Knox, um, but we really wanted to make sure that it was uh, a rounded tour and included lots of men, as many people as we could. So our key features, it's on a website and an app. We have this map feature that you can see here, which is great. You can really see how it's uh, laid out in the city like this. Um, we have further reading resources, which um, also include links to podcasts and things like that. So it's really um, great for everyone to get involved. And what we're most proud of is our addition of the video. So we really wanted to make this content not only accessible, but engaging for people. And we were very, very kind that Julian and Louise were so gracious as to come and spend two afternoons with me and Ruby to record, and you and to record these videos. Um, so just going through, they're just reading the text, um, what is on the app, but it really brings it to life. And obviously they're, they're the experts in it. So it's great to hear it from their mouths themselves. So obviously with a, a project such as this, there are going to be challenges and decisions we have to make along the way in order to get the right balance um, of what we want to do. So I'm going to go through a few of them now. So to include or not to include, this is something that I think me and Ewan had spoke about a few times is who do we want to, um, who do we want to involve in the tour? Who do we want to include? Should it just be accused witches? Or should it also include the prosecutors? Um, and we went with the decision to include these prosecutors and accused witches, because without this, you're not getting a rounded view of the witch hunts in Scotland. Uh, the prosecutors were as much a part of the trials as the accused witches were. So we really wanted to ensure that you're getting all the facts that you needed in order to understand the history of the trials um, properly. 
So, for instance, we included names such as William Colville and John Nesbitt, Lord, Lord, Lord Delton. And I've wrote down a few bits of information about these um, individuals here because I can't get the information wrong with Julian in the room. So I have to refer, make sure I'm getting all the dates right. So William Colville was the minister of the Tronkirk in the 1640s, and the Tronkirk is one of our stops. He was an investigator who interrogated Janet Barker and Margaret Lauder in 1643. He was also principal of the university in the 1660s and 1670s. So we really felt like he had a place in the tour, um, despite being um, someone who our modern minds might look back to and sort of condemn now. Um, he still had very much a, a process in, this, in these trials. Um, and L Lord Dalton was a lawyer and Lord Advocate who led the prosecution of Jean and Thomas Swear in um, 1670. So he also purchased the estate of Dalton Castle and um, where six women were accused of uh, witchcraft and dancing with the devil. So again, this is just another person who was involved in a way which we might think of poorly today, but still needs to be included um, to provide a rounded view of the hunt. So our path from original to final route was quite difficult. When I initially got the um, draft idea over from you and there was maybe over 23 stops. 25 stops, which is quite a lot, especially if you want to do it all in a one, it'll take you all afternoon. So we really had to think carefully about what we were going to pick, why, and um, how it would fit along the route. Uh, we wanted to make sure it was an Edinburgh focused tour because there obviously um, are so many different locations across Scotland that would be fantastic to do a similar thing with. But um, we wanted to make sure that the scope was uh, walkable because it is a walking tour. So we focused in Edinburgh. Uh, and we really wanted to ensure historically accurate locations. So to make sure we're researching where we're dropping a pin and it's not just in a random place we think it is, to really go behind the history and work out where um, these people would have um, been connected to. And this for me was probably the largest thing that I grappled with when helping to create this tour um, was the fact versus fiction. So we really intended to challenge misconceptions popular folklore and the public imagination about the history of witchcraft in Edinburgh. We wanted to strike a balance between making it educational and entertaining, um, including how to properly discuss sensitive topics. So I think that this is a really, really important point, just because that there might be an urban myth about a certain witch or warlock that might not be true, doesn't make it any less interesting or any less useful. But for our tour, we wanted to do it specifically about the factual um, walking tour history of Edinburgh. So that's why we've sort of wanted to um, challenge these misconceptions in our tour. Um, so uh, I did a few things to be able to combat this and work out the fine line between it, such as relying a lot upon uh, Julian and Louisa's sort of expertise. And I also got in touch with uh, an academic down at the University of Warwick, Dr. Martha McGill. She has created a card game, an educational resource for university students and um, school students about the witch hunt. So it's called Witch Hunt 1649, if you want to check it out, it's fantastic. Um, but I had a conversation with her about how she struck the right balance between this sort of um, game thing seeming educational and fun but it's about a quite a sensitive topic so um, just making sure I reached out to as many people as possible so for a case study to sort of show you how um, this all encapsulates into a stop um, I've decided to talk about stop four which is the upper bow and in this tour in this tour this is where we talk about um, Major Thomas Weir and Jean Weir so um, Major Thomas Weir and Jean Weir have sort of become mythologised in Edinburgh folklore um, and there's many stories as you walk down the grass market, I'm sure you'll find a tall guy standing there saying and he died under a pole and he was holding it, it was burning. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we um, stepped back from the urban myths and really looked into what the actual story was and reflect that correctly. So uh, Major Thomas Weir got his reputation as a warlock after he had died. Um, he actually wasn't executed for witchcraft and neither was his sister Jean. She was accused of witchcraft, but the charges were dropped. They were actually executed on charges of incest, um, Thomas Weir on bestiality and, and adultery. So we really wanted to um, get that right specifically. And it's definitely a stop I've had to think about for, for a while because it's a, a story which is so, um, the people of Edinburgh are so interested in it. 
we also wanted to locate the exact location of the Forgotten West Bow. So it, it's located, um, location is demolished now, but it's somewhere between Victoria Terrace and up Victoria Street. So to make sure that I got this right and um, placed his marker down on the tour correctly, I reached out to some other academics just to try and hone in on where it could be. And I think I found a pretty accurate um, representation of the location of where the Weir's house would have been. But if there's anyone in this room who looks at the tour and thinks it's wrong, please tell me. I'd love to hear it. Um, but I think it's accurate. I hope it's accurate. And as I said before, we really wanted to ensure we were myth busting. So overall, my experience and my main takeaways from this. I feel after working on this project that education should not take away from entertainment, but also vice versa. We should really make sure that we um, toe the line between both and that they both work together because just because something's factual doesn't make it any less interesting. I, I feel that that's lost a lot of the time um, in situations like this, but it's something that uh, was really important to me. Uh, I, I would advise anyone uh, wanting to embark on a project like this to consult as many professionals, academics, experts and other sources of information as possible. Don't just rely on the internet and don't, it's fantastic, but don't rely on just the internet and the books. Talk to people, get out there, reach out um, and listen to a few podcasts as well because they're always very useful. Uh, and finally, fact and fiction both have their own place in these projects, but it's useful to make sure that the context is explained. So I've touched on this, but just to reiterate that, um, it, it's really important to have this context on why things are important and why we talk about them in the way they do and why we should um, represent them accurately. So finally, this is where you can find us. If you scan this QR code, it will take you to the app store where you can download the Curious Edinburgh app and get exploring Edinburgh with the history of witchcraft in Edinburgh tour. Um, my contact details are down below. This is my email and my Twitter. Um, feel free to contact me if you've got any questions, you want to talk anything witchy, or you have any suggestions for the tour or any alterations. We'd love to hear you. Um, but with that, I think I'll pass over to Ruby to launch the new website.